There are only two types of Americans. Those who live in New York and those who wish they could. You got this. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Adolfo Carrion, Jr. I'm the commissioner of the New York City Department of Housing, Preservation, and Development. This is a special moment of new urgency for addressing our housing crisis. Nearly one month ago, we learned that New York City's vacancy rate, housing vacancy rate, dropped to 1.4 percent, the lowest rate since 1968. This historically low vacancy rate illustrates the pressures New Yorkers are facing in the housing market, and it underscores the dramatic need for more homes in New York City, especially for lower-income New Yorkers. One of the most important ways we can address this crisis is simple. Build more housing. At HPD and at the Housing Development Corporation, we depend on strong public-private partnerships to build the affordable housing that we need. Yet important partners in this work, minority business enterprises, both men and women, have at times struggled to secure financing and grow to take on larger projects here in our city. As Mayor Adams has repeated, repeat, repeatedly said, we can't wait to move forward on our ambitious housing agenda. And this includes empowering our minority, and business, uh, minority business enterprise firms to take the lead, take the lead in this work. So ladies and gentlemen, with no further delay and to announce the details of this historic initiative, uh, I am proud to uh, introduce or present, I should say, the 110th mayor of the city of New York, Mayor Eric Adams. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much, uh, Commissioner, uh, and just really the team uh, that's here. Uh, this is something that uh, I was happy to see Erica. It's something that we talked about uh, during my days of borough president. Uh, when it comes down to building, uh, it's just uh, you don't see the president of minority biz bu builders who are part of the growth of the city. Far too often, we see the uh, buildings going up and the hope and prosperity of those who live in these communities, uh, their desires and their needs are going down. And we need to align on what we do uh, to effectively uh, uh, coordinate uh, with the success that we're seeing in this city. And I think it was, a, it was an awakening uh, for all of us um, when Deputy Mayor M Maria Torres Springer on one of our morning brief briefings shared with us we have a 1% vacancy rate. Uh, that is just unacceptable. And we cannot on one breath call for uh, to end the housing crisis, but then we say, don't build on my block, don't build in my neighborhood, don't build in my community, and we put up barriers to building. And that's why we must become a city of yes. And we need our partners. And I see Goldman Sachs so much that I believe that, you know, you're a partner with the city on so many initiatives from our small business uh, opportunity fund uh, to other initiatives. And I just really want to thank uh, Goldman Sachs, the Community Preservation Corporation, New York City Housing Preservation Development, uh, New York, and all of our partners. And uh, job well done. Uh, Commissioner uh, Carrion, who's bringing his experience as a former borough president and someone who has really leaned into housing development throughout the years. And all of you behind me, uh, thank you so much. You know, I, I heard you. I heard you uh, loudly and clearly, uh, not only as a borough president, but on a campaign trail. Uh, that you were just really left out. And we were dealing with the traditional folks over and over again. And this was on my checklist of how do we uh, dismantle some of those barriers that prevent uh, diversity um, throughout uh, the entire housing process. Uh, we want to make sure that we uh, build the housing we need, but equity. 
Uh, we want to be an administration that deals with the historical inequities that have existed in our city a long time. And we came in office two years ago, I would say it over and over again, uh, to protect public safety, revitalize the economy, and make our city more livable uh, for hardworking New Yorkers. And that means building more housing for more people. We have an inventory problem. The DM has told us over and over again, it's the inventory problem that we are facing. And especially uh, for people of color and creating more jobs for so many who have been denied opportunities in the past. And too long, minority business enterprises, enterprises have faced uh, systemic barriers and restricted uh, financial requirements in our construction uh, industry. It has been a well-known secret for far too long, and our goal is to dismantle that. Uh, barriers that have pre prevented them from being part of the solution to the affordable housing crisis. And what I've learned uh, when Deputy Mayor Ashina Wright, first Deputy Mayor Wright, pulled together minority b builders, uh, they are looking for more than just profit. They're looking to help people. Many of them have come from these communities where historic historical uh, denial of proper housing. So they're really committed because they see their families, they see their faces, and they see the great opportunities to do so. Well, today it ends. This $50 million new initiative, the New York City Minority Business Enterprise uh, acronym MBE Guarantee Facility uh, will get money um, to minority-owned affordable housing developers and access resources they need to build more housing across the city and introduce long overdue equity into how we build that housing. Uh, the MB MBE Guarantee Facility will reduce barriers uh, by enabling as much as $500 million in private construction lending to MBEs, helping us reach our moonshot goal uh, that Deputy Mayor Maria Torres Springer put in place of 500,000 new homes in the next decade. It is needed. It is desperately needed. Our children are coming home from school, uh, coming home from a successful college career, and they cannot afford to live in the city that they grew up in. And too many of our elders are unable to age in place uh, because it has become unaffordable and we could do a better job in doing so. We need to create uh, job opportunities as, as part of this package. And this is a virtuous cycle that will help New Yorkers access the housing they need, the jobs and equity they deserve. As we said in the, this year's State of the State address, this is a city that's facing a massive housing crisis, not only in New York, but across the entire country. 60 years of injustice and undevelopment have brought us to the brink. And it's time for a powerful new housing agenda, one that will help us build more housing in every neighborhood. Every neighborhood must share the responsibility and obligation of building housing. There are too many neighborhoods where you have access to good transportation, access to good health care, access to good food, access to good schools, yet we have done no building in those communities. That must stop. That must stop. This is one city with one goal and one desire, and we must share all of the prosperity throughout the entire city. We must right the wrongs of the past and create opportunity for hardworking New Yorkers. We cannot say no to our neighborhood neighbors and our fellow New Yorkers. We have to say yes. This must become a city of yes. Yes in my backyard. Yes on my block. Yes in my city. Yes in sharing my park. Yes in sharing my transportation system. Yes in sharing my hospitals. Yes in sharing my supermarkets. We have to start saying yes. Everyone must have access to opportunities and not oversaturate and burden communities that we have for so long and displace long-term tenants. It's a bold initiative. It's a bold initiative, and there's a level of discomfort that's associated with growth. But when you come through it, you come through it being a better New Yorker that we're allowing all New Yorkers to enjoy the prosperity of this amazing city. That is why we're advancing a bold plan to build a little more housing in every neighborhood. Uh, Planning Commissioner Dan Gorodnik and his team, we're moving around the community boards now and sharing this conversation 
from virtual uh, vital zoning work with the city council to actions in Albany and on the federal level. Everyone must be part of it. Developers, citizens, community boards, and our partners at all levels of government uh, to help get us there. And I know what it's like to live with housing security is something that I face as a child. Right now, there's an Eric Adams out there with his family and parents that are looking at this and they're saying yes to what we are attempting to accomplish. Job one done. I want to thank everyone that's here. Let's get it done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Minority and women-owned businesses are the backbone of our city and our economy, and they deserve our support to do what they want to do, help lead us out of our housing crisis. But they don't just need us. We need them too. To build the housing we need, we must have a deep, experienced bench of housing developers that we can depend on. With their support, we will both meet the mayor's goals of number one, making a more equitable and inclusive business environment, and number two, reach our moonshot goal of creating 500,000 new units of housing in the next 10 years. In addition to the MBEs this announcement is designed to support, we could not do this work without the support of our partners. And that includes the New York City Department, uh, uh, the New York City Housing Development Corporation, who is committing $25 million to the MBE Guarantee Facility. Thank you to its president, Eric Enderlin. And I want to recognize its executive vice president, a tireless leader and Latina in our city, Ruth Moreira. Thank you, Ruth. She's a giant. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, she's a giant. She's phenomenal. Um, it's great to have you here, uh, Ruth. We also could not make this announcement today without Goldman Sachs, who is matching HDC's commitment of $25 million to the MBE Guarantees Facility. We're so grateful for your support, and I'm so proud to be able to uh, present uh, Asahi Pompey, who is the global head of corporate engagement and president of the Goldman Sachs Foundation. Asahi. Thank you, Mayor Adams. We're saying yes. <laughs> thank, you, the, thank you, Deputy Mayor uh, Torres Springer. The last time we stood shoulder to shoulder was just under a year ago where we were announcing the upsizing of a facility to help fund minority small business owners. Today, we come together again to address another major gap. With this first of its kind partnership, we are sounding the clarion call for affordable housing. We're sounding the clarion call for minority developers and we're sounding the clarion call for economic vitality. Now, I know many of you here today are MBEs yourself. You know the barriers to accessing capital have been stubborn. And let's face it, finding affordable financing is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Lender guarantees, liquidity requirements, these barriers have pushed many of you to partner with larger firms, which dilute your ownership and reduce your returns. Yes. Simply put, traditional financing have not met MBEs where they are. Now, we all know that Goldman Sachs is in the business of deploying capital to create economic growth. Our role as a bank is to identify gaps in the market and to test solutions to unlock untapped financial opportunity. So how exactly does this vehicle work? Through this facility, New York City and Goldman Sachs are linking arms with MBEs during the critical construction phase, providing backstops for completion, payment, carry guarantees required by lenders. This facility will unlock 500 million in construction financing to create nearly 2,000 affordable housing units 
for over 4,000 low and moderate income New Yorkers. Now that's the headline, but what is the through line? This facility will enable MBEs to build a track record as affordable housing developers. This facility will allow MBEs to scale their operation by taking home a larger share of the profits and fees. And this facility will importantly create more responsive housing across the city, built by those who understand the community they serve. Now we know that Mayor Adams has a bold vision for this city, and this broader partnership is really underscores that vision. It is to transform MBEs from being an anomaly to a proof point, and eventually a standard bearer, where this model can be replicated and scaled, not just in New York City, but across the country. I wanna recognize the many affordable housing minority developers like Erica, that have joined us today. I thank you for the work that you put in day in and day out to make this city more affordable, more accessible, and more livable for thousands of New Yorkers. Now, I always believe in giving credit where credit is due, so please allow me as I close to give a big shout out to uh, the Goldman Sachs UIG team, the investing team that's run by Sherry Wang and Dan Alger. Um, of course, HDP, led by Commissioner Carrion. HDC, led by President Enderlin. And the indomitable team at CPC, led by Rafael Cistero. I thank you. Thank you, Asahi. And I, I love the message that our work should lead to the moment when this is unremarkable. It is just minority developers everywhere across the United States. We thank you so much, Asahi, Goldman Sachs, your partnership. This uh, initiative is truly appreciated and certainly will make uh, for a better city for everyone. Uh, we also could not make this announcement today without the Community Preservation Corporation, who always steps up, who is also serving as the facility manager, the hard stuff. Now, allow me, allow me to introduce one of our key partners in building affordable housing in New York City, not only in this initiative, but in so many other projects across the landscape of the city. He is a predecessor in this office of commissioner of HPD, so he knows exactly the work that we're doing. Please welcome the CEO of the Community Preservation Corporation, my good friend, Rafael Cestero. Uh, and if, if we have a race to hard jobs, I know I'm going to lose. So uh, I think we we'll start here first, yeah, the hardest job. Um, listen, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, Commissioner, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, our partners at Goldman Sachs. Um, CPC is a 50-year-old nonprofit financial institution that was founded to support the initiatives of the city of New York and to help the city of New York uh, achieve its goals, help solve its housing crisis, help have an impact uh, in neighborhoods and communities. A few years ago, uh, we started something called CPC Access, uh, through which we have invested over $500 million in support of developers of color all over uh, the city, helping them spur their projects. We heard the importance of a guarantee fund. We knew that this was a critical thing, and we're just honored to be a part of it, uh, to be a partner um, with all of these uh, amazing developers um, and with our public and private partners to achieve a critically important goal. We don't just have a housing crisis. Less than 1% of developers are, 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 are minority um, or of color. We need to change that. We need a more diverse, we need a more inclusive development sector. Uh, this fund is gonna help us get there. CPC is thrilled to be a part of it. Um, and we're thrilled to have the leadership of the mayor um, and the commissioner and the deputy mayor to help drive this forward. And we look forward to many, many great project announcements uh, with this fund. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Rafael. We're so grateful to have you uh, with us here today, to have, have you with us 
and really every day because we're constantly in the grind with this. Uh, it's, it, it's not lost on any of us that we just ended Black History Month and are at the start of Women's History Month. Black and brown women in particular at a distinct and dramatic economic disadvantage. This is an MBE initiative, and it will also benefit black and brown women developers. And with that, let me introduce one of the superstars out there who is from the neighborhood. Um, and I recall going to a recent groundbreaking, Mr. Mayor, in Brooklyn, and uh, it was very personal to this developer. And there was a lot of, lo of love from that community because it was one of their daughters who came back home to build affordable housing and build community. Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO and founder uh, of Brisa Builders Development, Erica Keller. so much for that, Commissioner Carrion. I bring greetings this morning to Mayor, this afternoon, to Mayor Adams and his leadership team, to Commissioner Carrion and President Enderlin, and the leadership teams at HPD and HDC, elected officials, the financial institutions, and the community stakeholders listening and in attendance today. My name is Erica Keller, and I am the managing member of Brisa Builders Development which is an affordable housing firm based in Brooklyn, New York. We have developed approximately 1,500 units of affordable housing in the last decade in partnership with HPD, HDC, faith-based organizations, community-based nonprofits, and the state agencies. We have been very strategic and very thoughtful about our development projects focusing on very deep affordability, housing for seniors who can live independently ages 62 and older, seniors with challenges ages 55 and older, youth at risk of homelessness, homeless veterans, and other groups of individuals that have been marginalized, disenfranchised, and have not necessarily had access to quality housing opportunities. This work is so very hard. But I love the work, and I am passionate about making the communities that I know and love more inclusive as the, this city continues under Mayor Adams to evolve and be a great place to live, work, and commune. Today, I speak on behalf of my colleagues who stand behind me as I represent too small of a group of black female developers in New York City and across this nation who have not blossomed into the multitude that we could and we should with all of our black girl magic. <laughs> and why? Because we have faced institutional and financial barriers that prevent the cultivation and success of minority owned real estate development companies. Nationally, there are approximately 112,000 real estate development firms. And of that number, only 447, I'll say that one more time, 447 are black owned, with only 175 of that 112,000 being Latino owned. Those numbers are utterly staggering and saddening statistics. I literally stand here as an anomaly if we further disaggregate that data by gender. About five years ago, the agencies asked advocacy groups for black and Latino developers like the New York State Real Estate Chamber to take a deep dive into dissecting the institutional racism and systemic barriers we experience in the development of affordable housing and to use our poignant, concrete examples to make the recommendations needed to change policy, procedures, practices, rules, guidelines that would make a difference in leveling the playing field for access to opportunity for black and Latino developers. And slowly but surely, 
we are addressing each one of those stone walls and barricades of access, step by step, little by little, one policy at a time. So today we acknowledge the establishment of the Minority Business Enterprise Guarantee Fund. In short, the, implita the implementation of this facility makes me think of an old adage that I have mixed feelings about, that one of pulling oneself up by their bootstraps. Well, in order to do that, you have to have a boot and you have to have a strap. <laughs> And so it is illogical to think that groups of people who have collectively and individually been economically marginalized and disenfranchised for generations would have the ability to have four or five million dollars in the bank to post for guarantees of completion and continuation and any issue that may happen during construction. So, this is what is a requirement often by lenders for developers and contractors for, to qualify for large construction loans. So this product creates a pool of funds that could provide the guarantee necessary so that developers and contractors can qualify for this specific requirement of the loan without having to individually post the four or five million dollars of cash as an individual or firm. Therefore, this could potentially be a huge game changer in having black and Latino developers qualify for large commercial construction loans that they otherwise would not have qualified, truly opening the door of opportunity for larger development deals. So we congratulate Goldman Sachs and New York City HDC for stepping up and taking the actionable steps necessary to make funds available for the Minority Business Enterprise Guarantee Facility and to Community Preservation Corporation for the management of this guarantee facility, which will be difficult and as we work through all the nuances of a new program. And we challenge other lenders in this space to see how they too can support the establishment of more minority business enterprise guarantee facilities in New York City, New York State, and across this nation. For only through responsive action by the government and the financial institutions can we effectuate real change through making this a fair, equitable, and just country in all sectors of business. So today, here in New York City, in the affordable housing sector, with the announcement of the Minority Business Enterprise Guarantee Facility, we have taken a small actionable step towards that goal. And we have set our expectations to witness the success of this initiative by empowering black and Latino emerging developers. We thank you. We thank you for listening. And we look forward to seeing the success of this happening. And we say, yes. yes. Bravo. I told you she's amazing. <laughs> I have a confession to make. Um, at her groundbreaking for that project, uh, she made me tear up. And, and that's not a common moment for me in public. A big yes. yes. Come on, baby. I mean, this, this is it. Thank you. Thank you to all our partners, to the incredible hard, hard work that has gone into this, to the incredible hard work, uh, Deputy Mayor Maria Torres Springer, uh, to finance affordable housing in this town. Uh, we could not do this without you and so many others like you who are the real driving force behind our affordable uh, housing production. Again, thank you all for coming. And ladies and gentlemen, I hand it back to the boss, our mayor. <laughs> How are you? I'm well, how are you? Good. Fantastic. Can you talk a little bit more about how uh, minority-owned developers will be able to qualify for this funding? And are you specifically giving them the funding or just giving them, I guess, the backing that they need in order to qualify for something? You want to do a Maria or... You know, we always like when you. Uh, <laughs> I'd be happy to. She's the best. 
Um, thank you for that question. So I'll, I'll give the specifics in a second, but just to connect some dots. The mayor said the only way out of this crisis is to build new homes, right? The question is, who is going to build those homes? Mm -hmm. Through this guarantee facility, we want to make sure that our MBE developers across the city have a fair shot at doing as much of that building as possible. And so a $50 million fund, half of it through Goldman Sachs, half of it through the Housing Development Corporation, managed by the Community Preservation Corporation. These are major players who will make sure that we're actually able to leverage from that 50 million, about 500 million worth of private lending. Um, that will help us at the start um, support about 10 projects. Here's how you find out about this guarantee facility. CPC will start taking applications before the end of the month before the end of the month, which is, a, which is March. In the meantime, those who are interested in this guarantee facility can contact us at mbeguarantee at hpd.nyc.gov so we can start providing more information. But it essentially works as that backstop, that backstop during construction that Asahi mentioned, which might seem simple, and there are probably a lot of developers in the city who have no problem putting up that guarantee. But it has been a historical barrier for MBEs in this city, and we want to dismantle that by providing that important guarantee during construction through this facility so that those businesses can build, they can scale, and we can really start moving the needle in terms of both the housing crisis and the equity gaps that exist in development in New York. And, and, and uh, the deputy mayor said something that I hope that a lot of people uh, didn't miss, is that uh, all of the necessities in the city, someone is going to supply them. We have a housing crisis, someone is going to build those houses. Uh, we feed New Yorkers, someone is going to feed them. Uh, we have to transport New Yorkers for several different reasons, someone is going to transport them. Uh, all of these items, someone is going to do them. The problem has been, no one has been asking the question, is it equitable? That's what this administration is doing. That's the job of Michael Gardner, our chief diversity officer. Every year we supply these services, billions of dollars. But, you know, yes, we supply the services, but no one is asking the question, are the people supplying the services look like the people who are receiving the services, like a, an Erica? That's what we're doing. And that's a challenge because there have been historical uh, norms that people go back to those who they are comfortable with for whatever reason or another, and we're saying no to that. Not only do we want to build up our city, supply the goods and services, but we want those who are long-term New Yorkers who are supplying the services to particular groups, they should be looking like the people who are supplying those services. We have to change the way we do business in the city. When we're able to stabilize any of the people behind this, us, they can leverage that to go out and get more businesses because it's a sure, a guaranteed way of revenue projections and income. That's what we're going after. This is larger than just do we need more housing? Who's going to build that housing? That's where we're going. Quick question for yes. Deputy Mayor. Maybe you want to take this mayor too. Um, so the, the 50 million basically serves as collateral in a way. Is that is that right? And, and the, the 500 in financing, is that, I mean, that would be coming from various banks or just Goldman? Okay. Now, when that, you talked about scaling up, right? Like, I mean, that 500 million coming in, going to various firms, do you foresee that kind of helping these firms kind of create a, a better economy of scale with what they do, which is, from my understanding, kind of a problem that uh, minority-owned business have faced in the past in terms of the situation? Um, so the 500 million in private lending, we do believe will be unlocked because we are providing this guarantee. At the end of that, we, we're under no illusion that all of the problems will then be solved. But it's such an important proof point to um, ensuring that other lenders, other government institutions, other organizations that are able to bring down that barrier, that they do the same. Um, it was mentioned earlier, um, this, we have to go from 
um, an MBE building the types of affordable housing we need from that being an anomaly to being a real proof point to being just the norm. And it's not going to happen overnight, but it's also not going to happen if governmental institutions and major business partners like um, uh, Goldman Sachs that we don't put our money where our mouth is. So that's what we're doing today, Michael. Um, it will leverage that $500 million of private um, loans for these projects. And then I have no doubt that this will be so successful that we can scale this even more. But the mayor made an important point. It's also about demonstrating to other lenders that this is possible, it's effective, it's a good business strategy. And so MBE developers themselves, as their portfolio grows, as they continue to successfully build the housing, that track record speaks for itself. That's how we change the market, but it requires first movers, it requires um, a capital, an investment upfront, and that's what this announcement is. Hi, Mayor. Yes. Um, this costing the city $25 million. Uh, council report over the weekend says the city has $3 billion plus more than we were anticipating. Should we anticipate more announcements like this and less sort of cautious speak from the administration? Uh, you know, I say it over and over again, uh, we have to get it right. And I appreciate and value uh, the thoughts of the city council. And uh, we have a role here uh, in City Hall, and I think it's the balance of the two that we find a sweet spot. Uh, we must uh, be good keepers of taxpayers' dollars, and we're going to do our analysis on exactly um, what uh, dollars we have available. And I have a lot of trust in this administration, but clearly, it's you know I can easily say I trust the administration. I think it's more important to hear from SB, S and P Fitch. Uh, and others. Uh, others have stated, we trust this administration. Bond raiders uh, have indicated we trust what this administration is doing. And that is it. Those are international independent observers that stated that this is, uh, we're in good hands. The city's in good hands. And so we look forward. Whatever announcement we can make, we did, um, we recovered um, NYPD, Department of Education, Parks, FDNY. When we can, we will. Uh, but uh, there are turbulent uh, days ahead of us. We're not out of the woods. And we cannot uh, spike the ball and say, you know, the game is over. No, we have, a, we have some real challenges in front of us. Set, sunsetting of, of those stimulus dollars uh, uh, is real. The uncertainty of our economic future is real. We still are receiving, uh, you know, a substantial number of migrant and asylum seekers. We've done a good job of managing the cost. We're going to have a 30% a peg in that area, uh, but we have to listen to what those who are experts in this area, uh, what they have been saying, and they've been saying that, Eric, uh, you got this and you're doing this. We're going to continue to do that. How are you? Mr. Mayor, I think this question is probably for the deputy yes. mayor. Yes. I wanted to know the 10 projects that this access to $500 million will fund, about how many units is it? And when you're backing the loan, um, does it mean that the MWBEs will have access to lower interest rates when they're borrowing the money to fund their construction? Um, so I'll start, and I think we should hear from our partners who will be um, implementing this as well. Approximately 2,000 units, um, we believe, will be supported by this um, initial strong investment. And as I mentioned, if we can scale, um, we will we will do that. But that's the that's the initial estimate. And um, uh, the idea is certainly to ensure that there are that um, MBE developers are able to access the types of loans at competitive interest rates in order to actually build the projects. But I think it would be helpful if either the commissioner or, um, or um, Raphael can talk through what the major um, uh, qualifications are through, through this program to give a sense of um, who will be eligible and the types of projects we're in particular looking to support. You know, many, many of the participants are al already doing business with the city of New York and have been part of deals uh, producing uh, affordable housing they have a track record as, as partners. We have a requirement that allowed some of them to come in 
as uh, partner developers in these deals. But this is about bankability. This is about the ability to go solo, to not have to go to a majority general contractor to be your partner so that you can uh, be bankable, so that you can have a strong balance sheet. It means not, Erica, not having to go, or many of these developers, not having to go to another partner that takes 51% of the deal while they hold 49. Um, so this, this is about equity, but it's, it's fundamentally <clears throat> about being able to fairly finance these deals. So it creates that, you know, that backstop, collateral backstop that you were talking about, Michael, um, and, and allows these folks to fly solo. And these are, it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar industry in New York City, the affordable housing industry, and so many people are not participating because of the historic inequities and the inability to, to play the game. They don't, yeah, uh, a lot of them don't have the strong balance sheet history, and, they're, and they're requ you're required to have a lot of cash on hand to be able to put up guarantees to ensure that the lender is going to take the risk on your project. Good afternoon, Mayor Adams. What's happening? Uh, how has the city's affordable housing crisis been affecting the migrant crisis and vice versa? I feel I like that turtleneck. People don't wear turtlenecks anymore. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Finish. They're back. Finish. Yeah. You know They're baggy pants, too, I heard. Are they? Yeah. I got a, I got a rock of turtleneck. Yeah. You know that? There's a state program, MRAP, to relocate migrant families out of the city, but it has not helped as many families. Yeah, let them, let them flow. Let them flow. I was just wondering, um, does the state need to do more to offer housing options outside of the city? What's, what what's, what um, um, outlet are you with? Okay, Fox. Uh, uh, we listen. We all the help is a national government. I keep saying this over and over again, and I am really surprised that uh, the source of this problem is of a failure of a national solution. And we we pay a lot of attention to what the state is doing. The governor has been a partner in this, and we pay a lot of attention to what New Yorkers have done. Uh, it's just unbelievable what New Yorkers have really uh, sacrificed and are doing. Uh, this is a national problem. We need a national solution, not only for New York, but on behalf of my colleagues in Chicago, El Paso, Los Angeles. I say this over and over again, and, and it's a little surprising to me how little attention we are, we are paying, um, we're uh, looking at um, what the national solution should, uh, should be. And so the goal is to not only have a decompression strategy on the national level, but also on the state level. And whatever programs we put in place, we need to allow people the next step to the American dream. And it changes instantly. If we do one thing, allow them to work. My partners in Albany, my partners in other cities, they all stated, Eric, we're with you. Just allow them to work to fill the vacancies of jobs that they have. We have countless number of jobs. We can ready to go into uh, the uh, beach season. We need lifeguards. I was just down at um, the Herc on Randall's Island and asking how many of you guys know how to swim? All the hams went, went up. We got to fill these jobs that we have available. We have a lifeguard shortage and we have a, a group of people who can pass the lifeguard test without a problem at all. Something is just off balance here. And so, yes, all of us need to play a role in this housing. You take, you, you take Kate. I was just about to say, I was just about to say you said Kate was next, but you started yelling out. You know that? I was just about to say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you all.